Originally, it works this way. You have the icon platform M, you have Cubase, and icon platform M is also connected to icon platform D, and they communicate with each other, and they communicate with Cubase through the MIDI in-out ports. So Cubase sends all the data about fader positions, the knobs value, and, and etc. And it also sends all the text that is displayed on the LCD. Icon Platform M itself just displays what Cubase sends to it. Vice versa, Icon Platform M sends back to Cubase the fader positions, etc. What you can do to control it? You have to uh, put something to this point, some filter that will parse the MIDI messages from Icon Platform M, from Cubase, modify them, and this way you can enable or disable some functions. So you can do it, for example, with Auto Hotkey script. This is a software for Windows, sadly for Windows only. With the help of this program, you can communicate via MIDI with Icon Platform M and with Cubase. Uh, you can add additional ports with Loop MIDI, additional virtual ports. Uh, you can see uh, this is a Loop MIDI. You enter the name of new port, push the plus button and you get another MIDI ports in the system and with the help of these ports the programs can communicate. So in Cubase you select device setup, the Mac control and these virtual MIDI ports. So Cubase sends everything to these MIDI ports, auto hotkey receives it and decides whether to resend this data to Icon Platform M or not, what to do with all this data. In my case, I did a separate LCD display. AutoHotKey receives CSX messages from uh, Cubase and without sending them to Icon Platform M, it sends them to uh, Arduino, to LCD screen. It probably sounds a little complicated, but it can let you do anything with your controller. Control it totally. For example, the first thing I wanted to do is to turn this fader off. Turn off the master fader, because I think it should be at zero. When you suddenly move it and it goes to a different value and you render it, suddenly you find out your mix is clipping or it is not at maximum value. I think it is more convenient when master fader is at zero and doesn't move. At the same time, this fader, free fader, can be used somehow. I thought it would be cool to use it for writing automation for plugins. For example, I used to write automation with FreeG plugin, not to touch the volume faders on channels. I turn this fader to special mode, it goes to middle value, and you can edit any parameter in any plugin with help of it as using a mouse. You can drag any knob in any plugin with help of this fader. You can change the speed of the mouse move. You can press this fader and turn the knob 1. You can increase or decrease the speed so that it moves slowly or quickly. The scale of mouse movement is changed. Another fader that you have for writing automation, this is really cool, I think, and you have 8 faders to change the volume of channels, the standard functions. You can turn it off, it goes into sleep mode, doesn't uh, interfere with your production. I thought it would be cool also to put these faders to zero easily. There is no easy way to put them to zero, you have to look into the project window, into the mixer window, and slowly go to zero. I, I thought it would be cool to move them easily to zero. As you see, you press one button, 
and move the fader and goes to zero. It is quick and convenient and I like it now. This is the second thing I've done. The third thing I wanted to fix is the functionality of these knobs. As I told you, they suddenly jump to a different value when you turn them slowly. With help of auto hotkey, I check the speed and they are turned. And if they are turned slowly, big values are not transmitted to Cubase. And it lets you fix the knob's behavior when they suddenly jump to bigger value left or right. All the other stuff I've implemented is just uh, mostly original Mecha Control functions. Uh, you just need more buttons for them to work. For example, you need a shift button to uh, move fader one by one in Cubase 7.5 you have to press shift and press bank left right and you can shift faders one by one but we don't have shift here i wanted to choose a button on uh, platform m to use as a functional button so that other buttons can uh, get different uh, different functions and i thought that this button that acts like cycle can be that special button if you press it shortly it acts as usual, but if you press and hold, it starts to work as a functional button and all the other uh, buttons, most of the other buttons, start to behave differently. For example, this is a shift button now. You can press bank and shift channels one by one. In Cubase 7.5 there is no other way to shift channels uh, without shift button. If you press it shortly, it locks, it goes to shift lock, you can see a character uh, that it is locked and it locks off. You can lock it and use bank buttons to shift through faders. Now shift is off and bank buttons work in groups of 8 channels. One of the most interesting things I wanted to do is to edit plugin parameters with these knobs. One of these knobs now is the insert knob it goes to inserts mode and you can select the plugin on channel for example ssl channel plugin on uh, this insert now you can edit as you see the parameters in the plugin with help of these buttons the functions that i have implemented in the previous script when you can mouse over a plugin press just one button and the script reads the name of the channel, the name of the plugin, the number of the insert and sends the series of uh, commands to Cubase to go directly to the channel and to that plugin. You press two buttons and you go directly to this plugin and edit the settings of the plugin. If you mouse over another plugin, press this combination of buttons and now you edit the settings of this plugin. With help of one button you can bypass and unbypass the plugin you are editing. You can listen before and after. If you press and hold it acts differently, bypasses, and if you press it quickly it goes on and off bypass. This button lets you quickly go to pens mode when you are in inserts mode. Uh, this is a shortcut for quickly editing the plugin under cursor. Now we edit this plugin. Now we mouse over and edit this plugin. This is cool. Usually these push knobs uh, do the monitoring on and off. If you don't have any plugins on the screen, these knobs work as usual. Turn on and turn off the monitoring in Cubase and don't interfere with anything else. I thought it would be also convenient to use select buttons to open the channel settings. If you press and hold, you can see the channel edit window open up. For example, you want to edit the acoustic guitar settings, press and hold select, see the channel edit window, do something with it. 
press and hold and it closes. You can also go to different channel quickly. This is the additional function of select button. You can go to sense mode and with help of these knobs edit the value of level sense. For example, the amount of reverb on this guitar and so on. But sometimes it's more convenient and easy to to edit sand level values with uh, faders, not with knobs. So I did a separate shortcut that automatically goes to sand levels mode and turns the flip mode on so you can easily edit the values of sands with these faders. You go to pans and quickly go back to the standard mode uh, where this faders edit volume and lots of different stuff in the original make control is implemented here for example you can turn off the motors of the faders for example if you have a quiet piece of music and you want the motors to be off you can push these buttons and motors don't work anymore You can also turn the listen mode in Cubase, edit instruments, edit channel strips, undo, redo, history window, all the different useful things that are implemented uh, here from the original Maki control protocol. For example, on solo all, you can press any of solo buttons, pressing FN and for mutes the same thing, you can unmute everything easily. You can step through the channels without pressing shift. You can go to the start and end of project. You can jump to marker with help of these buttons. You can use channel groups if you want to see, for example, only some channels. For example, only group channels, only FX channels, or maybe only input output channels or all channels. Another function is holding a fan and pressing the jog wheel button and you can send any message, any MIDI note to Cubase. For example, you can press 44 and go to EQ mode or just press and hold these buttons and do the same thing. So a lot of useful functions from Make a Control are implemented here. As I said, dear friends, if you feel like you're good at programming and setting it all up, that's cool. I'll share the basic script in the comments and the instructions will be also there. You'll have to download loop MIDI and auto hotkey and the script and set everything up, name the ports the right way and probably you'll get all the basic functions working. If you need some more information, some help or custom version, you can write me. Uh, we'll try to implement what you want to do. Hope you find some inspiration. See you till next time. Bye.